Let's just start by saying that my March cycle was the most picture perfect cycle that any TTCer could ask for. Let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Keisha. I'm 33 years old and my husband Brandon and I have been TTCing since the end of 2019. Let me catch everyone who's new here up really quick. In the last four months, I've been pregnant twice. Unfortunately, I miscarried both of those pregnancies. Um, this is cycle number six for us. Last month, I did um, have my blood work done and it did show that my progesterone levels were really low. Since then, my OB has prescribed me progesterone su suppositories and um, the next time that I, God willing, get another positive, I will start to take those immediately. So before I get into last month's update, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I'm using to TTC. I had a few of my fellow YouTubers reach out to me and ask for me to talk a little bit more about that. So the first thing I want to talk about are OPKs, ovulation predictor kits, for those of you who are unfamiliar with them. Um, they look just like pregnancy tests and you take them and what they're looking for is the hormone that triggers our body to ovulate, to release the egg. Unlike pregnancy tests, two lines on an ovulation test does not mean positive. You'll always see a faint line on an ovulation test. As women, we always have the luteinizing hormone in our system, therefore the test will always pick it up. You do not have a true positive unless your test line is the same or darker than the control line. What's really cool about Premom is that they have a free app that you can use. I love it because you can take the test, take a picture from within your app of the test, and it will analyze and let you know where what level your uh, luteinizing hormone is at. Is it low, is it high, or is it at its peak? When it's at its peak, that means baby dance, baby dance, baby dance, baby dance. Once you get a positive ovulation test, that means that your body will release an egg anywhere from 12 to 36 hours from the time that you receive that positive. And you test twice a day if you want to have accuracy. Quick shout out to Premom. This month we partnered up and they were so kind as to send me a whole new package of ovulation and HCG tests to use for this cycle. Once I receive a positive OPK, I follow up and confirm ovulation using my basal body thermometer. I use a thermometer by Thermometer. I will link everything that I'm talking about down below in the description. I set my alarm for 5.30 each morning. When that alarm goes off, I wake up and before I even raise up in bed, I take my temperature. Remember, if you're gonna chart, you need to make sure that you get three to four consecutive uninterrupted hours of sleep. If not, then your temperature can be inaccurate. Let's get into this update. So I'm gonna go back to last month, February. I did decide that I was gonna use that month to chart and just see what my body was doing. So I did use OPKs and I started on cycle day eight. And turns out I got really dark OPKs starting at cycle day eight. Never got a positive in February. Again, just had a miscarriage, hormones everywhere. That didn't really surprise me. I do know that I did ovulate. Um, and I know that because through my charting, that was confirmed through my charting. And I spoke with my midwife and she was also able to confirm that through my charting. But I don't know when I ovulated. Um, I got dark OPKs around cycle day eight and then again at cycle day 16. So it was like my body kept trying to rev up to ovulate. Um, and it did eventually at some point, but I don't know when. So because of that, in March, I decided I'm going to start um, doing my ovulation testing the day I stop bleeding from my cycle. Sorry if that's TMI. I started doing my ovulation test on day six, March 6th, and to my surprise, I got a positive on day nine. Let's take a look at that. So here are my OPKs for the month. As you can see, I, log I logged my period on March 1st to the 5th. Over here, I have the date and the cycle day. So on the 6th, the day after I finished my period, I started testing. See, there's still a faint line there because you'll always get a faint line with your OPKs. But then on cycle day 9, 
I got a positive. Now I know that first one looks really, really, really dark, but I actually didn't get my true positive until the third test that I took for the day and that was at night. On cycle day 10, I continued to get dark OPKs positives and I also had egg white cervical mucus as well as ovulation pains. I kept testing day 11, 12, and then on 14 to make sure that the, um, the luteinizing hormone went down and that worked out perfect. Now let's look at my chart for the month. This is how I confirm my ovulation. If you take a look at cycle day 11, you'll see I had a spike in temperature. This confirms that I ovulated on cycle day 10. So as you can see, using my OPKs and my chart, I was able to pinpoint the exact day of ovulation and that was so cool to me. So let's go back to my pregnancy test. So like a crazy girl, I started um, to test for pregnancy at 10 DPO. As you can see, got a bunch of negatives, cycle day 10 through 15. And then I stopped testing on the 15th because I was pretty sure I was out for the month. And then I got my period on the 28th. Some of you may be um, a little bit confused about why I'm so happy. I'm so happy because my cycle seems to have gotten right back on track after my miscarriage. And that is really exciting for me. I know that there are women out there and it takes a few cycles for them to get back on track. So <clears throat> even though I wish I would have gotten a positive pregnancy test this month, um, it's just as exciting to know that my body is doing what it's supposed to do on its own. Um, I'm super excited to know that I have progesterone suppositories on hand. So as soon as I get a positive, I can go ahead and start using those. I can actually start using the progesterone suppositories four days after I ovulate. And I'm able to do that because I chart so I can pinpoint everything that's going on. I don't think I'll use them unless I get a positive. Yeah, so that is the update for the month. I am not pregnant this month, but I am super excited. If April is our month, this little baby will have a due date of my husband's birthday. And he's super excited about that. I'm super excited about that. So fingers crossed and we're just praying that next cycle is our cycle. I'm actually going to start taking ovulation tests tomorrow. So I'm excited about that. Before I end this update, I do want to show you guys all of the different supplements that we've decided to incorporate into our everyday intake. Um, I will insert a picture because there's so many of them. Um, I mean, I'm taking my regular prenatals, I'm taking folate, but I'm taking methylfolate because I my body does not absorb iron or folate the way that it should. I've had to have blood transfusions because of this in prior pregnancies. so. This uh, methylfolate is really good for those who don't um, absorb. Um, my husband is taking his daily um, men's one a days. Um, I'm taking maca powder. My husband and I are taking maca root this month. Um, we're both taking our probiotics. And yeah, so I will link everything below and I will also insert a picture here of everything that I'm using. Till next time, guys. Hopefully next month I come back with some great news. So sticky baby dust to everybody out there who's watching and who's on the same journey as me. Bye, guys.